Hello there, we're your tour guides and welcome to Hollow Bastion. My name is Alex. And mine is Bruce Jordan. Welcome to the Kingdom Hearts show. Now, we'll, shall we just pick up from where we left off last time? Yeah, because we kind of got a bit sidetracked at the end there with uh, certain distractions. But but now let's just continue off from where we left off. So we got to the point where we were talking about this giant monster that um, had appeared in uh, Traverse Town. And what happens there is you end up fighting it beside Donald and Goofy and you end up defeating it through like your teamwork combined, which is quite unusual since you've been fighting solo all this time. And after you've done that, you then get a cutscene where they ask you to come along with them because you are the key they were looking for, like in the most literal sense, because you're wielding one, I suppose. You're wielding a giant key. Key blade, obviously. And since they found the key, they need to take that key and follow wherever it guides them because that'll help them deal with the issues that are happening with the planets and it's also following their king's wishes, which is the most important thing because they want to try and reunite with the king. And they figure that if they do the same things that the king is, then they'll probably meet up with them at some point. So they decide, let's take Sora along and we'll go to some new worlds and see if we can find them. So at this point, you're granted to the um, solar system, this game's equivalent of the solar system. The world map, if you will. Solar system. I guess. And you have the choice between, if I'm right, it's Tarzan or Alice in Wonderland? You are not right. Am I not right? It is Olympus Coliseum or Alice in Wonderland. I think it changes depending on your answer. Depending on what... No. Really? I've had it different every time. It's definitely not different. Okay, so um, yeah, so we've had the choice. We enter here, and we've got the choice between Alice in Wonderland, or Memna, or Olympus Coliseum. And for the sake of getting that world over and done with as quickly as possible, because no one seems to like that world, uh, we choose Alice, Alice in, in Wonderland, Wonderland. <laughs> one of your favourite worlds, eh, Alex? I hate Alice. I, I, I don't know what it is about Alice in Wonderland. I just despise it. I hate it. It's just not fun. It's rather boring, it's all samey looking, it's... It is very samey looking, but that's because it's... it's For most of the um, the world, it's using one room, but in different ways. Like, sometimes you'll be walking up the wall, sometimes you'll be on the roof, stuff like that. It's just like the movie, it's just bland and an acid trip, that's it. That, I guess that's that's your opinion on it, but I don't mind it personally. It's not my favourite world, but it's not my least favourite world. Well, I'll get into what my least favourite world is later. I'm trying to remember what is your least favourite world. We'll get into that later. Isn't it Atlantis? No. No. You're close, though. Am I? The Arcolite close. It is around that area. Moving on. Um, so we go to... We'll start we, off in Alice in Wonderland. So. We go to Alice in Wonderland, and basically, you won't get any major plot points for a little while. Uh, but when you're in Alice in Wonderland's world, you will um, try and help out with the issues in that world. Like Alice is on trial uh, from the Queen of Hearts because she's dirty. <laughs> <laughs> she's on trial from the Queen of Hearts because uh, the Queen is accusing her of stealing her heart, or at least attempting to. And what we have to do is we have to try and find evidence that is actually heartless that's doing it, present it to the Queen, and if you manage to do so successfully, then she still doesn't believe you, tries to just keep Alice locked up, and you tries to keep Alice locked up, and you have to fight a boss battle between a giant um, army of cards while you have to rescue Alice. But she gets kidnapped, so... Regardless. But what you were saying there about um, she's got Alice on trial, the Queen's got Alice on trial there for trying to steal her heart, uh -huh. literally just describes a wee dirty. So she's literally on a trial for being a wee dirty. Am I right or am I right? I think this podcast is not very safe for work. <laughs> it's not very... Well, it depends on your definition of a wee dirty. I didn't care what yours is, but... <laughs> What's yours, Alex? <laughs> Let's not talk about that. That's NSFW. <laughs> That's what I thought. <laughs> so after you've completed the trial segment where you've fought off a deck of cards and you've rescued Alice by lowering the cage that she's in, you find out that she's been kidnapped and then there's nothing else that you can really do. You end up sealing the keyhole to the world, which stops the Heartless from 
being able to go into the heart of the world and take it over, which is a main major gimmick of the game. Or does it? Or does it? We'll get into that later as well. It at least helps. I don't know, we never seem to see that world ever again. Well, it's appeared in like four, it's appeared four times. In the KH series. Was it? Yeah. What for KH games? Uh, recorded. One of them was recorded, yeah. And I think, what is it, Birth by Sleep, I want to say? Birth by Sleep, no. Um, uh, 358 was... slash two days? Yes. Right. So after after we've done all that, we then have to move on to the next world, where Donald and Sora tend to have a, a bit of a disagreement. Donald goes, no, we're not going to that world, there's no way the king would be there. And Sora goes, well, my friends might be there, the ones that I'm on this journey to try and find. So they have a bit of a, a difference in opinions, and they end up crash landing on the planet anyway, and that is actually Tarzan's planet. Which, I... I don't get why that's never made another appearance in a Kingdom Hearts game. It wasn't that popular. I don't know. I, th- I thought it was better than like Alice in Wonderland's world. There was a lot more to do. It was a lot just... I don't know. I think it's just because Tarzan's like one of my favourite Disney movies is I have such a soft that's spot fair for enough. it. Like, I, really, I really love the Tarzan world. I have to admit, when I first played it when I was younger, I really didn't like it. I just kept getting lost. Yeah, like, you could get lost in it, but that's because it was somewhat of a big world... Plus, there was a lot of ways to fall down and then end up at certain areas again. It was it was quite annoying for me when I was younger, but now that I've played it, I can actually enjoy it more. Yeah, but you can just literally put that down to get good son. Yeah, I was a kid. Yeah, so I got I got good. I got good. The story in this world, um, you've crash landed. You're separated from Donald and Goofy, and you're not entirely sure what's going on. You get, end up getting attacked by a saber toothed tiger, the very famous saber toothed tiger in. Um, Shukai, I think it is. Oh, I can't remember its name. Shukai, it's. It's something like that. We'll call it Shaquille O'Neal for the time being. <laughs> no, we'll just yeah, we'll just call it Big Shaq. Big Shaq, yeah, sure. We'll go with Big Shaq. So Big Shaq attacks. <laughs> that fits far too well. <laughs> <laughs> that fits far no! too well. <laughs> I'm, back, I'm backing away here, man. <laughs> oh, holy crap. Right, so yeah, Big Shaq attacks with his... And we, end, and we end up fighting it off. Um, and Tarzan comes in to try and help as well. And driving Big Shaq off. And he starts speaking gorilla at you. And you're rather confused as to what's happening. So you're trying to talk to him, saying, like, have you seen my friends? He's mm-hmm. also confused because he's not really met many other, like, English-speaking humans. He's just, like, scratching his ass and pulling a flea out of his head. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but eventually you manage to get through to him with friends. Yes, follow me. And he's like, yes, take me where they are. Wherever you go, I go, go. I go, 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 go? Yes. Sure. Go, go with that. So you're going to wake me up before you go, go? Would you kindly... Because I ain't planning on going solo. After we've got, <laughs> come to this altercation, we end up going to a, a camp where we find Jane, we find Clayton, and we find Donald and Goofy there as well. There's only one thing that annoyed me about Kingdom Hearts, and it was Clayton's voice actor. <laughs> it wasn't Brian Blessed. That was that's that's it. That's just the point there. It wasn't Brian Blessed. To be honest, Brian Blessed is a very busy man. He probably wasn't too bothered about starring in a, in a video game. You'll be surprised. Dude, at, the guy does Peppa Pig. At that time, he probably didn't care. Dude, at that time, he was just still doing theatre work. like Exactly. He, he was probably busy with his theatre work. He, he hasn't exactly done a hit movie since Flash Gordon, which was, what, 1979? Yeah, but he was still doing things that were keeping him busy. Regardless, fair. let's not debate about Brian Blessed. Yes, we're all sad he wasn't in it, but god damn it. I'm salty about that, okay? More saltier than the ice cream in Kingdom Hearts 2. <sighs> Still need to have some. Yes. I want some. We shall go for some. One day. Soon. Soon. <laughs> so we meet Clayton, Jane, and we meet up with Donald and Goofy again. They momentarily forget that they were angry with each other, and then just went, oh, hang on, nope, I'm not talking to you. 
So then the main, we get into the main gimmick of the, the world, which is we've got to try and save the gorillas from the Heartless. And once we manage to do all that, we hear several shotgun shots in the distance, and obviously. Uh, Clayton's weapon of choice being a double-barreled shotgun, which he can seem to fire an infinite number of times. It's kind of like Moe's shotgun from The Simpsons. Yeah, but Moe's awesome. <laughs> he also has a triple-firing, double-barreled shotgun. So? <laughs> that uh, kind of goes against the laws of ammunition. Have you ever watched a Sylvester Stallone movie? Or yes. an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Yes. Or a Bruce Willis movie? Yes. How many times did you see them reload in any of those movies? They were loaded off screen, of course. <laughs> exactly, that's what Clayton was doing. He's just got a... N- no, he was firing three times on screen. Shh. He's just quick loading, that's all he's doing. <laughs> Reloading in the blink of an eye. Yeah, it's just fast reload, man. Slate of hand maxed. <laughs> Pretty much slate of hand pro, man, that's it. That's all it is. It's only slate of hand. And then he got his gecko boy as well, who's... So we end up going to the source of the shotgun uh, blasts, which is actually Clayton riding a giant chameleon. Well, not yet. You have to fight him for a little bit while he's got a small, heartless army. But once you sufficiently beat him up, um, he then gets his other boss to try and help him, which is a giant chameleon. Which I'm pretty sure when we did record that game footage, I think it may have wrecked you a couple of times. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. But that was because of the path that I chose. I didn't make yeah. anything easy for me. Well, no, that was because... Well, no, sorry, you didn't make I, anything easy for me. I decided to be a bit of a... D- <laughs> and the, the, all this footage is lost, by the way. It really depresses me we lost this footage because it was actually some good material. We set him a challenge that... We set Bruce a challenge that he, he gets to sit down and play Kingdom Hearts. I drag him out of class. He gets to sit down and play Kingdom Hearts, but on the condition that I pick the rules. Yeah. And I had a no grinding, a no grinding policy. Which grinding is essentially he just just kills enemies until he gets to a certain level. And well, it wasn't so much the like the no grinding policy that I it was that the... was bothering me. It was the fact that like <laughs> if I ever entered a room a second time, I wasn't allowed to kill the enemies. Yeah, which made me vastly underleveled. Yeah, it's it's fun though. It it brought a challenge and yes it may have also nearly wrecked if that was me playing that that controller would have got wrecked like if you want to see more of this sort of thing then make sure you tune in when the Remind DLC is brought out because at that point I'm going to be doing a level 1 critical keyblade run on Kingdom Hearts 3 and I'd love to join you on that one what you want to do a level 1 Kingdom Hearts no I want, I want to com- I want to do the commentary with you on that one oh <laughs> I'd like to be there to witness that so what you're saying is you're getting the DLC and I'm coming over right uh, no, what I'm saying is you can bring your Xbox over and... That's a lot of effort, though. Dude. That's an awful lot of effort. But, sidetracked here, we're getting we're getting too into the fact that we're like DLCs because we are really avid Kingdom Hearts fans. Very much so. Some more than others. I enjoy playing the games. This guy's the lore master, which is why I've tracked him around with me. He knows the story a lot better than me. I'm just like, ha, 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 I get this with a keyblade. <laughs> <laughs> Burn on the secret bosses. <laughs> Me um got um big um smack um stick. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> me see heartless me smash. So once we've defeated Clayton and his gecko, we end up going to the keyhole of this world to try and seal it and um progress further. And we finally find out what Tarzan was saying in Gorilla. He was actually saying heart. And he was trying to say that your friends are always there as long as you look in your heart. Which is a really touching thing from Disney. Sadly, though, that is all that we see from Tarzan. Sadly. For ever, actually. But we he, never see him again. But he may forever be in our hearts. As he very well taught us. Yes. Um, so, moving back to where we need to go next, we actually need to uh, go back to Traverse Town. But before we go there, we end up going to Olympus Coliseum. Yeah, we 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 we'll go to Olympus. We we go there. We meet Phil. Phil's just like, sorry, no tournament. What are you doing? We'll move the rock. Uh, well, he was setting up for a tournament, and he thought that you were Hercules, and he was like, yeah. right, move that rock for me there. So you go over, you try and push the rock. Nothing happens, and then he's like, what? It's too heavy. What? 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 What's that? Jump on the Hydra's back! So then he then eventually turns around and and realises that you're not Hercules and is like, oh, 
well, now I'm just disappointed. Uh, which he's like, we're, and who the hell he are says, you schmucks? He says, uh, I got two words for you. You guys ain't heroes. The famous thing that Phil does. And at that point, Goofy's just looking at him like, bitch what? <laughs> While counting the words out on his hands. Goofy's <laughs> the only one that seems to actually think out the three of them, which is strange considering Because Goofy it's is Goofy. borderline retarded. <laughs> and Goofy's the only one that seems to actually have a brain between the three of them, which is... It makes no sense. It's worrying, is what it is. He's, well, Giffy's like a simple Simon. He's just. <laughs> but in, in Kingdom Hearts, he's a genius. He's, he's, he's not... like a top grade scientist. He's top grade scientist. Is simple and clean. <sighs> Tara, why do you hurt me like this? Because you don't want to think twice. Stop that. You don't want to face your fears. <sighs> yep. While going into the sanctuary. I'm going to need a sanctuary after this. <laughs> <laughs> Off topic there, we'll quit the, we'll quit the Kingdom Hearts opening references here. Or will we? You shut up so I can continue, <laughs> right? <laughs> yes. So, after um, Phil tells us that we aren't heroes, um, we end up leaving and we get a ticket from Hades going... Well, actually, sorry, no, there's a training section before that where we have to bust some barrels and prove how strong we are. And Phil, even though he gave us this challenge and we wreck it, he's just like, no, get out. Which Then we, then we see Hades, who gives also, us a ticket. By the way, played by James Woods, still in the game. Yeah, he's... James Wood came back and reprised his role as Hades. Brian Blessed, just saying, <laughs> James Woods reprised his role. Why didn't you... But moving on! But yes, Hades, the original voice actor for Hades, James Woods, of course, he actually came back and did the role, which is, which is nice. It's nice to see him come back. Yeah, it's nice when actors do that, isn't it, BJ? Yes, it is, isn't it, Alex? Yes, but moving on. So we get a ticket from Hades <laughs> um, that allows us to go into the Coliseum and we immediately go, <laughs> literally from five seconds of being out the door, we go back into the door and it's like, Phil, we've got a ticket! Now he's like... Alright. Alright, Synth, where the hell did you get that? He's just like, yeah, you got a ticket right in there. Like, it was funny, if, like, when, obviously, when my my, my fiance was playing Kingdom Hearts, we're not going to use her name for all in terms of privacy purposes and GDPR and that, but she was actually on this world. She'd done half the game because she, she got as far as in the game as she could. And she couldn't do Mount Olympus because she was like, I don't know what I'm doing with Phil. Like, he's asking oh, me to move something. Oh, she never pushed the rock. She, could, she didn't know how to push the rock. And she by the time she got to Olympus, they figured it out. She was already, like, level 50. Oh, no. <laughs> so all, all I can remember was just watching her absolutely smashing everyone. Rip Cerberus. <laughs> yeah, essentially, it was R.I.P. Cerberus. One hit smack gone. <laughs> <laughs> Cloudy, you're all out. Yeah, but get into that. We go and we enter the tournament. We enter the tournament, and um, the tournament is entirely made up of Pre- heartless for prelims. some reason. It's pre- preliminary rounds. It's, the- it's it's pre it's prelim rounds, but like the, the the enemies that you fight, they're all heartless for some reason. Like, why are they entrance into the Colosseum? It doesn't make sense. Because that's all they can get, demons wise, I guess. Like, I think uh, like, I think the Olympus Colosseum's kind of lacking in villains right now. Like, I wouldn't even really have said villains, but, like, there the seems to be just lacking in competition. Right, screw it, we'll just round up some monsters. There you go. Here we go. <laughs> there you go, Hark. Get on top of the Hydra's back. So after we get through the pre home rounds, we end up seeing another familiar face from Final Fantasy, which we alluded to earlier. Blonde we Zach. see... Blonde Zack or Cloud Strife. Blonde Zack. In a very dapper outfit. Yes, Zach did look pretty dapper. Yes, Alex. So we also find out that um, Hades is like sort of got some form of advantage over Cloud, I guess you could say. Yeah, he has him under his spell. Just yeah, has him, un- has him under his control because of some sort of contract because basically Cloud's searching for Sephiroth well, if you've ever played well, Final Fantasy. Well, no, what's happened is... Cloud's dead, essentially, in this, because Hades has took him from the underworld. So Cloud is dead. 
at the start of this game. Well, he's not dead. Well, no, he is. He's in the underworld. He's in underworld. That's how Hades gets him. He was looking in the underworld for. Oh, I thought he was dead. He was no, no, that. he's he's actually he's not dead. Right, so he, gets he the appears contract. again. Yeah, appears again in Kingdom Hearts Two after all. Yeah, but no, I think that's because but basically, we end the contract with Hades. Well, he's remember the same as same as Orin. He's well, Orin had a different Oren's, reason. Orin's understandable, to be fair. Orin was actually dead, so that's that's fair enough. Yeah. But uh, Cloud wasn't dead, no. He was searching for Sephiroth, and he believed that he possibly might have been in the underworld, and um, that's when Hades found him, got him to sign a contract, and that was like when he put him under his control, if you will, because yes. Cloud was looking for Sephiroth like he always is, because he wants to settle the, the score with him. Even though we've had that same situation over and over and over and over again, well, to be fair, this More is only like the second time that has happened. Well, really. no, there's like what there's been like God those throughout the years of Kingdom of Final Fantasy, and Seth and Final Fantasy Seven, there's been like seven hundred million fights between Sephiroth and Cloud. I'm pretty sure they've had more fights than ACDC's had reunion tours. Well, no, no, not <laughs> not quite. In Seven, they only had one fight. You've watched Genova all the other times. And even then, it wasn't Sephiroth that... like It wasn't like a Sephiroth clone. It was actually Genova. He only fought him once in the entire game. And then there's... He fought Advent beside him Ch- once. Advent Children. Then there's Advent Children, which then is... Then there's when... Then there's Kingdom Hearts 1. Then, Kingdom then Hearts there's 2. Kingdom Hearts 2. But we've not gotten to Kingdom Hearts 2 yet. We're only Kingdom Hearts and 1. And then there's the remake of Final Fantasy 7. Then there's the remake of Final Fantasy And then there's the Sidia. Again, this is all future stuff. I d- I d- I d- we're sitting in 2001 here. Yeah, but right now we're not in 2001. We're 18 years in the future. Well, yes. But this is 18 years of fighting, I'll, I'll admit that. But at 2001, this was like the third, second, third time. Still, regardless, there's been too many Sephiroth cloud fights. But also not enough. Yes, there is. No, there has been enough. There's we're, also not enough. I've, I've had enough of Square Enix trying to push Seven down my throat. Just give us the remake we all want. Give us nine. Yes. Oh my word, yes. Square Enix. Get on that. Nomura? Yeah, Nomura. Nomura. I I highly doubt you're going to be listening to this podcast. Final Fantasy IX remake. Make it happen. You've got loads of time to punt out like 13-2, 13-3, 13-4, 13-5... Why 13? Well, because 13 was obviously the worst game in the series. But yet, In your opinion. In most people's opinion, 13 sucked. And, and it had a lot of mixed reviews. A it's, lot of people liked it. 13 2 sucked. 13 2 was actually better, in my opinion. 13 2 sucked ass. 13 well, 2 is better than 13. But this isn't, this isn't the Final Fantasy podcast. This is the Kingdom Hearts podcast. This is Hollow Bastion. This is, yes, this is Hollow Bastion. So... So we go through the prelim, prelim, uh, prelim rounds. We go through the prelim rounds of the Olympus Coliseum, and we eventually get up to see Cloud, and we end up having a bout with him. And depending on how that that goes, you can defeat Cloud at that point, or you can lose to Cloud, and it affects a cutscene that you, uh, you get later on as well. I think we lost to Cloud. I don't I think, think we got far enough into it for that. No, I think we got to Clouds. Pass honestly. Pass. I can't remember. It's on, it's on there somewhere. It's one of the, it's one of the ones because we definitely. Well, the done... save file was there. The footage isn't sadly. Well, no, that footage would be there because we finished Alice in Wonderland. That was. Didn't the you say the footage was lost? Yeah, but that was the one we lost. Because remember, we did. Do That's a... what I'm saying. The footage was lost. Well, no, we've got that foot. That was only one part of footage. That could have strung between the starting of the game, then Destiny Islands, which takes about an hour. Mm. So, we got. It might be on the one we're transferring the now. Well, here's hoping. Here's hoping, because I want to at least include some Coliseum, at least in this segment. Just some Coliseum fighting, just in this segment. But win or lose the cloud, we see the next part of the story where Hades has actually betrayed everyone involved, as he does, Cause and he... has set Cerberus on the, the Coliseum. And then out of the clouds, we hear this famous theme. We see the man... In the red underpants on the outside of his blue jumpsuit. Yes, there came Superman to save the day. Is what we would be saying if we were doing a DC one, but no, it was Hercules. Of course. 
I was kind of wondering where on earth you were going with that. Well, but they're essentially the same person. They're like... Except uh, Superman isn't a demigod, he's just an alien. I don't know, Superman is pretty godlike. He's an alien. Yeah, but gods are technically aliens. Are they, though? Hmm. Hmm. But Hercules comes in to try and save the day and tells you to get out of the arena. But Sora being Sora retreats for five seconds and then goes, nah, I'm good actually, and then goes right, running back and try and help him. And you have an epic boss fight between you and Cerberus. Which is actually pretty fun. It was a really fun boss fight. Like, it was, it's, I, I don't think there was a single boss fight. No, 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 there was one boss fight I truly disliked in Kingdom Hearts 1. But that was the final mix boss fights. The final one. Oh, right, of course, yeah. I, I didn't like... I didn't like fighting the Ice Titan. That was in the original. Oh, was it? I thought it was a final mix boss. No. To be fair, when I was younger, I didn't really finish it. I got stuck on Sephiroth and couldn't beat his ass, so... Yeah, there was Sephiroth and the Ice Titan. You could fight them both. Yeah, the Ice Titan. Well, okay, right. I didn't and the Rock Titan. The Rock Titan. Rock Titan was easy. Rock Titan was easy. The Ice Plus Titan. Plus you got loads of XP for that. Yeah, the Ice great. Titan was really hard. The Ice Titan was... Like if you didn't oh. if you didn't know oh. how to fight it, then it was a difficult boss. Oh, it was a very difficult boss. It was the gold match after all. Yeah. And the platinum match being Sephiroth, which is the mm-hmm. quote unquote mm-hmm. ultimate super boss of the game. Well, not really, there's the Phantom the Peter Pan. That's that's why I'm saying quote unquote, because there's three four in the final mix. Yeah, because there's what is it? There's the Sand Scorpion. There's the Sand Scorpion in Agrabah, which we'll get into later. There's the Phantom in, in uh, Neverland, which we'll get into later. There's Sephiroth in the Colosseum. And if you're playing the Final Mix version, there is also the hooded figure in Hollow Bastion, which we'll get into later. <laughs> he was pretty cheap. Not gonna lie. His attacks were pretty nasty. It was more of that when you got into half health, he put this really cheap thing on you. Yeah, it, was, it, was, but, it was really cheap. Listen, moving off target... That was your tour for today. Be sure to tune in for another exciting episode of the KH Podcast. Hollow Bastion. Hollow Bastion. Now, if I believe you had, a, I believe you had something to say at the end of the last episode. And of course, until next time, may your heart be your guiding key. <laughs>